Okay, uh, cohort 13, uh, Miss H here, and I'm going to spend a little time talking to you about the Universals and the Gracie Curettes. And uh, right now, in the beginning, I'm going to focus on the Gracies, the area specific. So uh, I want to put this one back here until we get to it in a little bit. So I'm going to start with uh, the 1, 2, the 11, 12, the 13, 14. And like we discussed before, the lower the number, the more anterior in the mouth it is, like the 1, 2, uh, or if we had a 3, 4, or if we had a 5, 6. And as we get further back in the mouth on uh, posteriors, then we're looking at the 11, 12, and the 13, 14. All right. 11, 12 only for mesials, 13, 14 only for distals. And that's one rule that you need to remember. And, uh, you know, eventually you will get to where you see your instruments on your bracket table and you will be able to look at them and just say, that's the 13, 14, just by how sharp the bends are. Uh, and, you know, once you pick it up in your hand and you, you know, confirm that that's it, then your next step is going to be to find your correct cutting edge. All right, and so like we said before, you're, you hold your handle you hold the the, the, uh, the instrument in your in your hand, the handle by the handle, and with the Gracie curette, you're going to find the terminal shank, and the terminal shank is what I have uh, painted yellow here. So when you find the terminal shank, you look at it closely, and then you find which end of the cutting edge, which of those two cutting edges dips or is lower, like we said, the Picasso dip. Okay. Uh, so if I'm holding this one, uh, if I'm holding the terminal shank uh, straight up and down, like the handle, then it appears that the lower cutting edge is going to be on this side, okay? So when you put the correct cutting edge, then your terminal shank is always going to be parallel to the surface that you're on, okay? So I'm going to start with... Um, the one two because we're going to we use that on anteriors and then here's our anterior tooth and here's my midline and i'm going to be going surfaces away so i'm going to find my correct cutting edge by looking at it holding it here in front of me like this and then i find the, the i find the the uh cutting edge that tilts down okay so i'm going to place the lower one third on the midline and I'm going to insert it subgingively. I'm going to tilt the handle and go up into the sulcus at a zero degrees. And then I'm going to stand up on my fulcrum. And of course, I'm my fingers on here right now for the purpose of demonstration. But ideally, you don't ever fulcrum on the same tooth that you're working on for fear of, you know, instrumenting yourself or cutting, you're traumatizing yourself. So, but for the purpose of this, I'm just doing it so I can show you how this works. So we're gonna tilt the handle, insert it into the sulcus at zero degrees, stand up my terminal shank with the lower one third end, and then we're gonna be pivoting and rocking and getting and rolling so that that terminal shank always stays parallel. If that terminal shank were to come this way, it's incorrect angulation causing trauma if it goes this way or if it comes this way. So because this working end is up into the sulcus, all you have for a visual clue is going to be your parallel terminal shank, okay? And so that's the clue that I need you to remember. All right, so now we've done surfaces away, so now we need to do surfaces toward. And so, you know, based on process of elimination, it's got to be the other end. So we're going to flip the end. Okay, there's my terminal shank parallel. Uh, there's my cutting edge on this side. So it's going to go up against this tooth subgingively. Drop the handle. Insert. Stand up on my handle again on my uh, fulcrum. And then walk it, roll it, pivot. Nothing's moving. All my hand is, all my fingers are moving together as a unit. 
There is no finger. There's no separation. My hand, every, all the fingers move together as a unit. Okay? There's no separate uh, finger movement. This finger doesn't roll over. This doesn't curl over. All Everything works together as a unit. Okay? So now I'm going to show you a little bit with the posteriors. Okay?